So, one of the things, hey buddy. One of the things, um, one of the things that I'm doing a little differently with the cordwood challenge is I have been felling the trees and sectioning them in the woods and then I haul them back home with star here and uh, that affects the strategy I use when I'm bucking a little bit because these little shorter sections have a tendency to roll around a little bit and so I've been trying a couple of different things to figure out the best method of uh, efficiently bucking these shorter sections of log. I just brought in that big one which is actually the butt section of the tree and stars a little it was a little about just about as much log as he can bring in and he's still uh, breathing hard and it doesn't help that it's 60 freaking degrees on January 22nd and everything is soggy muddy so it's harder pull plus he's wearing his winter coat and it's 60 degrees out so I don't want him to overheat because it's easier to overheat cattle because they don't sweat the way horses do so um, we're taking a breather here um, but then we're gonna get back to we got just a couple more pieces of that tree to get so with a log like this it's so heavy that I actually want to take some chunks off of it right away just to make it easier to work with um, so yeah basically what I do is I just you know it's kind of looking down and looking at the width you know I kind of make a square essentially that size and then visualize the 45s going from corner to corner so you basically build a square centered on where you want the um, notches to meet more or less and then you know you just start So that's kind of funny. There's three of Steven's sushi plates. <laughs> yeah, this is a little wobbly. So, 
I'm noticing this handle is a lot longer. It's kind of getting in my way. I don't know. I'm. I mean, not when I'm reaching down for the bottom here, but up here, I'm not crazy about it. Yeah. Not as accurate with this axe. I'm missing a lot. That's embarrassing. There we go.
So winter came back overnight and we have January again. Uh, and I just wanted to say a couple of things about this axe to finish out this video. Um, overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I learned a lot about a bunch of stuff. I learned how to play with rawhide. I learned how to make hide glue. Uh, I learned how handy it is to have a rule on your handle. Um, and uh, yeah, this was a fun project. I also learned that my preferences for handle length are kind of specific and that this axe is just a little bit too long for me to be completely comfortable with it. I'm going to keep using it. I still have some wood from that tree that we cut down to uh, buck up and split and I'm going to use this axe to finish out that tree. And then I have to decide if I'm going to keep using this axe or if I'm going to go back to my old reliable, which is this axe. Right there. That is a four and a half pound plum jersey pattern. That is pretty much my favorite axe in the whole world. And if you look at it, it's not, well, you know what? Let me set that up just slightly differently so we can see them more closely side by side. There we go. So if you look at them, they're not all that different. The plum is bigger. The bit is a little bit longer but they're actually more similar than they are different other than the fact that the plum is a pound heavier. And I would say the pound lighter that the Phantom Bevel Axe is is actually nice, especially with felling. That plum, if there's one thing that I don't love to do with it is, is to fell a big tree because by the time you're finished, you're pretty dang tired. Because with a felling cut, you have to hold the the ax way up in the air horizontally the whole time and that gets tiring um, and so the lighter ax when you're felling is pretty nice but when I'm bucking on the ground when we're bucking up these logs that extra length on the handle was actually really getting annoying especially on the thicker logs where near the top of the cut it would be awkward and uncomfortable and some of that has to do with I'm still having some trouble manipulating the logs um the shorter length logs and i need to forge some better log dogs and i need to forge out a cant hook so i have all the materials the tools and infrastructure i need to like maneuver these wood these logs to maneuver these logs efficiently but i mean if you look at these at two handles they don't look all that different um in length but let's measure them measure it from the bottom of the bit. From the bottom of the bit to the hook on the phantom bevel handle, that's 30 inches. And from the bottom of the bit on this one to approximately where my, my hand sits on this one is 27. So that's about three inches difference. And it turns out that three inches is a, the big difference between very comfortable and a little bit awkward. Um, and that's interesting information. And I'm going to hopefully keep that in mind and remember that when I'm hanging my next axe because this handle is just perfect for somebody like me. Uh, and even if I was hanging another three and a half pound head, I'd probably want to go with this length handle for myself. I'm about, you know, in the medium five foot range. Somebody, this, this handle might be better for someone right around six foot. And I may give it to somebody if I ever have a buddy who's looking for an ax that uh, is in that height range. So, I'm really happy with the Phantom Bevel jersey. Uh, I honestly don't have opinion about whether or not the Phantom Bevels are an improvement over just a regular smooth cheeked ax, but 
they look cool and you know like I love jerseys and I don't know that the jersey pattern is any better than like a Dayton or a Connie but I like the way they look and if you're going to be out in the woods swinging it all day you might as well be happy with the tool you're using um, and so yeah thanks for watching <laughs>